neglect. What is wrong with me? I mean, why does the brain change? There's significant cognitive and emotional disability. Your mother didn't show up. Your father didn't show up. Trauma that they're enduring just seems to be more severe and more long lasting. Nobody said, I'm sorry. And I am still working through things that happened to me when I was 10. There's ghosts in the nursery. I literally didn't know what to do. You know, people say, well, you don't have enough time. If we could go back in time, maybe. That's all we have. I don't think giving up is really an option. There's not enough apologies that one could give to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Funding for Not Enough Apologies Trauma Stories was provided by Focus Fund for Journalism and Friends of Wisconsin Public Television. All rise. So much pain, so much pain, so much brokenness. Dane County Juvenile Court Judge Everett Mitchell says when he first took the bench in 2016, his days would often end in tears, his own tears. As I started listening to these children and reading these stories and letting them talk to me, I started realizing like there's been nobody in their lives and every adult that's been in their life has caused them more and more pain. Mitchell presides over cases of children who've been removed from their homes for dangerous circumstances, including abuse and neglect and cases where children are charged with the juvenile equivalent of crimes. At the onset, very traumatized children who experience all sorts of trauma from removal, home, abuse, neglect. It's not always clear that they're able to get the resources and the help they need to process all that pain. And so it starts with emotional outbursts and those emotional outbursts turn into disorderly conducts. Mitchell says he sees a steady progression of the same juveniles catching adult criminal charges. He calls it the child welfare to adult prison pipeline. We're gonna take the handcuffs off. On this day, the courtroom door opens to a case in point. Bailiffs bring in a boy held in the juvenile detention center who looks much younger than his 16 years. The judge orders the boy's handcuffs removed. It's an effort, he says, to try to change what it's like to be a child in the system. We know these children are traumatized. We knew that they were in pain. It made no sense to indiscriminately bring them into the courtroom in handcuffs. What's up? You doing all right? Yeah. Better today? Yeah. I came to see you. On Long Thursday. before he appeared in this courtroom, the boy lived a life of relentless adverse childhood experiences. In the child welfare system since the age of five, first as a victim of 23 reports of physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, living in institutions since he was nine, group homes, foster homes, treatment centers, juvenile prison, more than 30 placements. I don't have anybody, he told a social worker. A court transcript reads that at the age of 10 years old, he could not understand why his mother would not want to see him. It says, while living in a foster home, the boy's mother told him she was coming to visit. Testimony showed he walked around for two days with his backpack, looking out and watching for his mother to come and visit with him. But she never showed up. And he wasn't getting treatment, and I think he And now he's before a judge with his own public defender sitting next to him in court. That's not what happened. I don't think that anybody entered the world predisposed to sell drugs or steal cars necessarily in the nature versus nurture debate. How did that 12 year old who may, may not even be able to touch the, the ground with his feet, how did they end up in that chair? As children become teenagers, criminal charges can amass, as in this case. State Representative Evan Goyke plainly connects trauma to incarceration. State statistics show 98% of incarcerated youth have experienced trauma. The vast majority of juveniles that are in custody tonight had some kind of child welfare intervention when they were younger, likely where that trauma was experienced. For his part, Mitchell sends children to the state juvenile correctional facilities sparingly. In fact, the judge ordered the boy before him here removed from Lincoln Hills when the teenager wrote to him complaining about repeatedly being jumped and beaten up at the prison. 
because, you know, he was just getting beat up too bad. I brought him here the first time, and nobody showed up from his family to take custody of him. There are a lot of juveniles that have been incarcerated at substandard facilities, and we see the evidence through the high recidivism rate. We see that that program doesn't work by the fact that they continue to engage in criminal and risky behavior. If the facility was working, that number would be lower. And yet what to do in the face of continued criminal and risky behavior, like the alleged behavior of the 16-year-old before Judge Mitchell? This police pursuit video shows a chase and crash on a Madison highway in February of 2018. According to prosecutors, the teen before Judge Mitchell was the driver of the stolen car involved. As a result, prosecutors in court that day told the judge they deemed the juvenile a danger to public safety. I think that the safety of the community should be of paramount consideration here, and that at this point, we have enough of a track record just in the recent months that every time we have released him, we have had new victims, we've had new crimes. There is conflict between acknowledging a person's traumatized background and holding them accountable for their actions, especially when those actions can be crimes. Mental health police officer Andrew Muir confronts deep trauma in the communities he serves. We see horrible things. We see horrible abuse. We see horrible neglect. But we encounter some kids with really profound traumas at such an early age that it, it impacts brain development, um, let alone their relationship with, with almost anyone. The catch-22, if you will, for law enforcement and being trauma-informed is that there's, there's only a certain extent to which we can compensate for that based on sort of our very nature and what we exist for. That being to protect and serve public okay, safety. And I'll call therapists and see if we can get Prosecutors in juvenile court lamented that every time the boy before Judge Mitchell was released, he committed new crimes. One new crime landed the 16-year-old in court again, appalling childhood. this time in adult court on felony charges. Count one is a serious charge, attempted first degree, intentional homicide, use of dangerous weapon. If convicted with the enhancer, defendant faces 65 years in prison. Judge Mitchell says this case that started as a child in need of protection and services leaves him broken. This is to me like the worst Chips case ever, you know, because he's alone. And not only is he alone now, now he's alone facing adult consequences for some of the choices that he got involved in with some of his friends. He falls into this unique place where I don't think all of his needs have been taken care of, and I know all of his treatment needs have not been addressed, and there's not enough apologies that one could give to say, I'm sorry for what your mother didn't show up, or how your father didn't show up, or how families didn't show up, or the times in which you abused in these places. Um, Even as he presides from the bench, Mitchell relates to the children of trauma who come before him. Part of my patience for these children is, you know, that was me. Every last one of them, you know, I grew up, you know, you know, protecting my sister from an abuser for 12 years. I grew up being abused myself sexually. And I know what it's like to be locked inside of yourself and so gone and so confused and so angry. And so I tell the kids all the time, I'm not your judge. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to show you that I'm your reflection. Whatever you see in me, you can be the exact same thing because some of you are smarter than I was. You're a survivor. You have power that you just have not even begun to tap into. So if you think I'm special, then remember that I'm just your reflection. If we could go back in time maybe and kind of start when these kids were younger and, and, and use that model of not what's wrong with you, but what's happened to you. If that would have been the mantra of when these, my clients now who are 12 and 13 were four and five, I don't think we'd be where we are right now. 